Okay, so thank you very much. Um, my name is Chris McLeod, and I'm from the University of uh, British Columbia. Uh, and it's been a real pleasure to come here. So uh, I have kind of joined this uh, enterprise quite uh, recently. And so um, what I'm here is, is to really talk to you about uh, a, a research project that I think very much fits in with the overall agenda of some of the uh, objectives of uh, the Shirk program of research. And, and this uh, comes from a, a research project that, that I've been leading that uh, was funded a number of years ago by uh, the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, uh, where uh, we had the opportunity and the mandate to essentially bring together a number of workers' compensation claim data. So we ended up having about uh, 1.7 million uh, records of injured workers across six Canadian provinces. And so for much of the, the past four years, my research team has been working intensely with that data uh, with the main objective first of actually deriving uh, a data set uh, where we can make uh, reasonably valid comparisons of uh, work uh, disability or other types of claim outcomes using compensation data. Uh, and uh, as a consequence of that, uh, we have uh, an opportunity to um, apply this data set to, I think, some of the research questions that, that may support uh, the mobility uh, or geographic uh, agenda um, of this project. And so um, I'm here really to show uh, some preliminary results. Uh, I'll uh, emphasize that they are uh, very preliminary. We've uh, only done these over uh, the last six weeks, uh, really with the aim of, of doing uh, something that uh, might stimulate uh, conversation uh, at today's symposium. Uh, I'll also just uh, sort of note that some of this work bridges and links very nicely with the work that Nic Nicola Cherry uh, presented uh, on the first day, looking specifically at uh, out-of-province workers between Alberta and uh, Newfoundland and other uh, maritime provinces, and you'll certainly see some similarities here as I go through this. So I just do want to acknowledge there's a variety of co-investigators. I won't spend a lot of time naming them out. You can see them on the slides here. I certainly also want to acknowledge the CHR operating grant as well as the six compensation boards uh, who did provide uh, their data. But note that these are my opinions and not necessarily held by anyone else. So why should we study work disability of mobile workers? Well, in this audience, it's not something that I really need to reiterate because I think a number of my prior speakers have aptly and very nicely sort of justified uh, the need for this type of research. So I won't spend a lot of time going through these points. I think they've been uh, nicely made. Uh, and so I want to make sure that uh, we have lots of time to really look at what we're doing uh, in this um, research uh, that I'm presenting to you today. So our, there is certainly uh, prior research and, and it's nice to see that there are a couple of people in the room that have published on this. So certainly want to acknowledge Sonja as well as Nicola Cheria, Cherry as well as uh, they've, they've looked at this within uh, single provinces or with a subset of provinces. And certainly what the prior research has, has found is that when we do look at workers whose province of residence are not the same of their province of injury or when we're looking at say within provinces and thinking about distance and community that we do see that there are significant barriers uh, as well as longer durations. So for the research that I'm presenting to you today, well actually I'll just sort of show you some trends across uh, all of the 10 Canadian provinces. This doesn't include the territories uh, in terms of the proportion of uh, interprovincial employees by province of employment. And this is taken from uh, Statistics Canada's uh, employer-employee uh, dynamic database. And I actually think that some of you have even better data than this. So this is just basically to illustrate the trends or the proportion of interprovincial workers across the 10 provinces. And you can certainly see that there is a real gradient or gradation uh, with uh, Quebec at the bottom. You've got uh, Ontario, Manitoba, New Newfoundland in, in, the, in the middle um, as well. And then up at the top, you've got uh, 
Alberta and then Saskatchewan um, with an increasing trend upward, which really, I think, during this time period uh, reflects the increase uh, in their oil and gas industry and how that actually attracted uh, the province workers to, uh, the, um, to that province. Our study uh, includes six provinces, so we have BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba and Ontario, and then unfortunately we skip over Quebec. Um, we would love to have that data and be able to include it into, in the study as well as Newfoundland. But we do have one sole uh, maritime province, uh, New Brunswick, you, which you can see illustrated on the slide. So we have uh, all six uh, <coughs> comprehensive compens workers' compensation data uh, over a 10-year period from the provinces that you see colored uh, in front of you. So our research questions specific to this uh, presentation, uh, first of all, across the six provinces, we want to characterize uh, what are the lost time uh, or time loss claims for all of these other outer province residents, uh, and how do they differ, and in what ways do they differ from uh, within province residents. Uh, looking both um, Empirically and descriptively, uh, what do we see in terms of trends with respect to uh, their work disability duration, at least defined by workers' compensation data, uh, comparing them to within province residents, and then looking for how that, whether we see that maintaining or sustaining after we carefully control or stratify for a variety of relevant uh, characteristics. So I'll talk a little bit about the data. Um, we do have claims level data from six Canadian workers compensation system. Like I said, that's ar around the neighborhood of about 1.7 million claims on injured workers across a 10 year period. Uh, we spent a lot of time trying to make that comparable and harmonized. That was not an easy job. There are very there are considerable differences in some cases in terms of how compensation boards collect data. Um, but nevertheless, uh, we, uh, I do believe that we've uh, created a harmonized data set where we can make valid comparisons across these six provinces. Uh, for every injured worker, or in more precisely for every claim, uh, we do have their residential coast, postal code uh, as well as their province of, of, of injury uh, and we were able to map that to the 2011 census uh, division using what is called a postal code conversion file uh, and data provided by Statistics Canada. We've defined our cohort in a specific way. So we are only looking at lost time claims. So that is a requirement for an injured worker to have an accepted lost time claim that was adjudicated by one of these six workers' compensation boards. Uh, and that did require that they had to have an indicator of having received at least one or more disability days paid. Uh, so it's not all injured workers as a consequence. Uh, We've restricted that to age 15 to 80 at the time of injury. Uh, and we're focusing on work-related injury and musculoskeletal disease. So a lot of accepted occupational disease claims, say for example, cancer or asthma or those types of things we've excluded from uh, this cohort. Uh, Non-missing residential province as well as non-missing occupation and industry information. We'll also note that workers who had an indication of a residence outside of Canada, uh, so all of those sort of migrant workers that we've been looking at uh, in some of the other sessions, uh, we have excluded them uh, from the cohort. So this is really restricted to individuals that uh, their usual residence is within Canada, even if it's not um, where they're working within Canada. So you can see the number, it's 1.6 million uh, claims uh, across a 10-year period. So method, and our method actually in a lot of uh, senses uh, with a few small differences is very similar to what uh, Nicola Cherry um, 
presented on yesterday. Uh, so I'm, descriptive analysis is basically what we call a Kapler-Meyer survival curve. I'll show you some of those are nice pictures. Uh, and then we did a Cox proportional hazard model, which essentially allows us to sort of look at the difference in the likelihood of transitioning or exiting off paid disability benefits um, from the workers' compensation board. So I'll just make a, a very clear statement right now is, is that we're not necessarily measuring return to work in this data. I mean, certainly one of the things that we've learned in the seminar today is that uh, injured workers are often transitioned or their disability benefits are ended without true sustainable return to work. So, so when we think about what we're seeing here, we need to interpret uh, our results with that back in mind. We're actually looking at transitioning off paid disability benefits from workers' compensation boards. Um, we're able to, because the data for the most part is quite rich from a quantitative data uh, perspective in terms of the number of variables or covariates that we have on uh, injured workers, is we're able to actually adjust for quite a number of factors, and you can see some of them listed there, age, gender, injury type, year, occupation and industry, as well as their earnings, the type of firm they work in, and of course the province or WCB jurisdiction. Now, we already know that injured workers who work in a province that they don't reside in are different than injured workers that do in terms of many of their characteristics. And so some of the differences that we might expect to see are what we might consider what we might call compositional differences. Um, so we want to control for that, uh, and so we uh, implement uh, a matching strategy called course and exact matching, and so we basically are taking every single one of those out-of-province injured workers and trying to find a comparable within province workers who have similar co compar comparisons or similar characteristics, uh, and you can see the type of variables that we actually matched on or uh, uh, identified. And so, and we'll show you results. We'll actually be able to show you whether, how much, and to what extent does the matching actually attenuate or change the results in terms of the differences in work disability duration. All right, so let's look at the data. Uh, so you can see that we've got our six uh, provinces. In some, we've got healthy number of claims uh, across all six provinces, uh, and we can all, and we can see the distribution or the proportion of out-of-province claims within each of those provinces. So we'll start uh, actually in Alberta, and I'm going to do that because it nicely sort of builds on Nicola's presentation this morning. Uh, and we can essentially see that there's about 11,000 uh, out-of-province claims, which comprises of about 4% of all claims uh, in that province of Alberta. In contrast, in BC, while we have more claims, um, there's a much smaller percentage, it's only about 1% or about 5,000 claims. In Saskatchewan, a uh, much smaller number of claims overall, around 95, but the relative number of out-of-province claims is actually higher, it's the second highest relative number com with the exception of Alberta, and that's about 2,000. Manitoba looks a little bit more like British Columbia in terms of the uh, relative number of claims, about 1,500. Ontario has only about 1.4% of claims, but because it's a large province and there's a lot of claims, it's actually the second largest sort of absolute number of claims. And then you can see uh, New Brunswick here with about 1,000 claims, about 1.7. So we actually do have nice a nice numerical cohort in all six of these jurisdictions. Um, and we have about 29,000 uh, out-of-province claims to look at. So our, our, our ability from a statistical perspective to actually examine this is very good because of the, the actual numbers that we have here. So we can actually do some things uh, that are quite uh, nuanced and sort of looking at trends and differences across uh, provinces and understanding what might explain uh, drivers of longer disability duration in terms of out-of-province residents. So we want to show one other thing here. So this is a little complex, uh, but we did try to put some color in it, and the color is really sort of meant to sort of show you uh, 
kind of a pattern and kind of a, a residential, like where claims are coming from, from an out of province res resident. So I'll walk you through this. Um, and what we really want to do is we want to look at this, we want to orient ourselves within columns. So we're looking down. Uh, so in BC, you can see there's the 99% of within province claims. We'll just look at the colors there. So most workers, out of province workers who are injured within BC, they come from the province of Alberta and then the province of Ontario. And then very few of them come from any of the other provinces. Now, in Alberta, we find something kind of interesting is, is that the majority of out-of-province residents are actually coming from the two contiguous provinces. So that's Alberta, BC, and Saskatchewan, with uh, Ontario uh, being the, the third largest. In Saskatchewan, the pattern, again, persists where it's really Alberta and Manitoba, where we have the highest, and then Ontario, BC, and Ontario. Manitoba, the same pattern, with it being Saskatchewan and Ontario. Now, we ordered this a little bit differently, but Ontario, you can essentially see that it's almost entirely com made up of uh, workers uh, living in Quebec that are claiming uh, in Ontario, uh, and that I think makes Ontario unique. There's, there's definitely a different sort of residential pattern in terms of who's working where in Ontario compared to the four western provinces. And then finally, we have New Brunswick, way over in the east, uh, where we can see that it's really Quebec as well as Nova Scotia. Thank you. So let's look at the characteristics. So key claim characteristics of out of province residents, looking at sex or gender here, uh, what we do see is that uh, they are more likely or more predominantly to be uh, male, about 75 versus 25. Uh, when we look at injury, we uh, age, sorry, we actually see that they tend to be more likely to be younger, so and much less likely to be out of, of older ages in terms of 55 to 64. Injury year, we do see a, a, a decline over time, and that uh, does sort of capture the fact that the oil and gas industry and the primary resource industry uh, in Alberta in particular did decline uh, in the latter part of the study period. And notably for injury type, the big difference that we see is that out-of-province workers are much more likely to report some form of uh, fracture. So just comparing these bars with these bars, you can actually see that the differences are quite stark. Other characteristics, and I know that this might be a little hard to read uh, given uh, the size of the screen, but I'll just note that the differences in with, between within and out of province claims, claimants with respect to occupation are that it, they tend to be much more likely to be in trades transport and equipment operators, as well as from primary, primary, industry, primary industry occupations. Now, when we look at industry, the big difference here is that they're much more likely to be in construction, as well as mining oil and gas, and then uh, a little bit in terms of agriculture and forestry. So, so there are some really large differences across the entire uh, sample. So let's look at the summary of cohort matching. This ultimately is our matched cohort. So almost every uh, out-of-province worker we were able to match, that's because we do have this good fortune of having about 1.6 million potential matches. So let's look at some results. So this is a Kaplan-Meier curve, and basically what this is looking at is just the proportion of individuals still on claim given the number of disability days paid. And you can certainly see that out-of-province workers, and this is unmatched or uncontrolled for, um, transition off claim at a much faster rate than um, within province residents. And even when we match, and what you'll see is that that kind of solid green line sort of sucks itself up, is that you still see a difference. So what we do with our statistical modeling is that we sort of are able to sort of come up with the proportion or a percentage um, of the likelihood of exiting off this curve at any given point in time. So these are basically Cox proportional hazard estimates, or what they're what is called hazard ratios. And so what all we really need to do for the purposes of understanding the data is, first of all, if 
the hazard ratios are below one, it means that you're less likely to transition off claim. So we, that basically means that we see a much greater likelihood of transitioning off claim or conversely staying on claim if you're an out-of-province worker. And we can interpret these as basically saying kind of like percent. So unmatched, unadjusted, it's about 65% or 35% less likelihood of transitioning off claim. And unmatched, adjusted, and matched, adjusted, you can see that they're very similar to each other. That changes or is attenuated up to about 25% or 25 less likely transitioning off claim. We've also looked at this across each of the six provinces. And you'll note a very distinct pattern that the four western provinces look very similar to one another. So we wouldn't conclude that there's anything different in terms of the likelihood of transitioning across claim when we look at BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. That's about 75%. The hazard ratio is about 75, so it's about a 25% less likelihood of transitioning off claim. We do see some a very different pattern in Ontario. So the the penalty is only about 10%. The hazard ratio is, is 0.9. Uh, and then New Brunswick looks more like Ontario uh, than it is than the rest. So there is something to investigate further here, and that might be something that, as we take this analysis further, is understanding why are we seeing these differences. And I think there are some reasons why we might, that if perhaps in the question period, uh, we could get into if that's of interest. We've looked at this by industry sector. And this is interesting, and these are the three industry sectors uh, you know, that the high, had the highest proportion of out-of-province claims. Certainly see that it is, it is, the penalty is there for all three sectors, but it is largest for transportation and warehousing. And again, that's something we might want to look at. The mining query and oil and gas, this is probably what sort of is most similar to what Nicola looked like. So in the minute or two that I have left, I uh, just want to conclude. So summary of findings, and again, I want to talk that and emphasize that this is preliminary work. Uh, we do see that there are differences in terms of the characteristics, and that's no surprise. We also see that the cumulative dis work disability duration is longer, even after adjustment uh, and matching compared to out-of-province, within-province residents. And there are really large differences by sector as well as by jurisdiction, and that's something that I think we want to look uh, further into. A discussion, there are limitations, and we've talked about that before. Our work disability measure is workers' compensation payments, and we do know there, there are limitations to that. Nicola actually did show that there is bias in the compensation data. Uh, we focused on place of residence, but aren't really able to look at uh, the specific relationship between the geographic distance between place of residence and workplace at presence. Um, we probably do want to look and more carefully at industry and occupation differences. And then there are some uh, methodology assumptions that we do need to sort of attend to, which I won't get into. And then I think we want to actually look at factors that actually explain some of these differences. So, what we're really here is describing the differences, but we haven't really gone to the point of understanding why we see those differences. So I thank you for your attention, uh, and uh, I look forward to your, your comments in the question period. So thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you.